That's the feeling we've all had. Now a new shoe would make you glad to put the best time you recall when you wore no shoes at all. Back the day. Fresh water is something we take for granted, yet we all know it's something we can't live without. Water is already a limited resource in many parts of the world and is likely to become scarcer in the near future as the climate changes, population grows, and consumption around the world increases. We've already seen water scarcity in parts of the country with large populations and drier climates. Las Vegas, that desert dreamland, is rapidly draining Lake Mead, its main source of water, and has little intention of changing its water-wasting habits. A years-long drought in California has led to water usage bans in that state. Around the country, aquifers are being drained at many times the rate they're being replenished by nature. A great way to limit your water usage and consume only what can be sustainably harvested from the environment is to install a cistern. Before there was a water grid in many parts of the country, people built cisterns to catch and store rainwater, and for many, it was their only source of water. Using a cistern, you're forced to think about your water usage because only so much falls from the sky and only so much can be collected off your roof. If you live in an area with a lot of rain, you might not have to be as careful about how much you use. But if you live in a desert, it's going to be a lot harder to get what you need. Still, a cistern can be a sustainable alternative to replace your existing water supply. Here at Dancing Rabbit Eco Village, I've recreated this old technology using modern tools. So let me explain a little bit about the simple water system I have in my house. When I turn on the faucet here, what you see is rainwater. I collect rainwater off of half of my roof, it goes down through a downspout into an 1100 gallon plastic cistern. I use a 24 volt DC pump to pump the water out of the cistern and into a pressurized system. I've got a six gallon pressure tank underneath the sink here. And I'll explain a little bit more about that in more detail in just a minute. Uh, this is just a drinking water filter so that I can get drinking quality water. Most of the water I consume in my house uh, goes into washing dishes. I also use a little bit for cooking. Uh, that's kind of the great thing about living here at Dancing Rabbit is that we share our resources. We share a showering facility and laundry facilities, so I don't have to install a water system that has to heat up water and deal with that amount of water. Uh, most of what I need I can catch off of my roof. The common house where these uh, shared facilities are located also has a rainwater collection system and so a lot of the water that is used in the common house is rainwater that's been caught. Uh, why don't we take a look at what's going on underneath the sink here. So this is what it looks like underneath the sink. We've got the cistern intake pipe here. The 24 volt DC pump pumps water out of the cistern and it pressurizes the system. This is a five micron uh, water filter. It just gets sediment out of the, the cistern water. You don't want any of the se sediment going into the six gallon pressure tank because that'll shorten its life. This pressure tank has a plastic bladder inside of it that fills up with water and then the air pressure inside the tank pumps the water out, pushes the water out when you uh, turn on the faucet. The pump will kick on when the pressure in the system gets down below a certain level and then it will automatically shut off when the system becomes fully pressurized. So although this system doesn't maintain as much pressure as your typical grid uh, water system, it's definitely enough pressure to do what I need to do washing dishes. This DC pump here is connected to my battery bank which is powered by my solar panels so essentially this whole water system is solar powered. So as I was saying the water comes down from the roof um, and I've plumbed in this ABS piping so that I can have a, a tube to catch the first wash that comes off of the roof. Um, so as soon as it starts raining this will fill up Put the cap on and it'll fill up and it'll catch all the sediment, all the leaves, anything else that might be on the roof that I don't want to go into the cistern. And then once that fills up, all the rest of the water, the rainwater will go into this tube that's diverted into the cistern tank. Um, there's different ways you can set this up. This is the way that I set it up. With this, with this tube, after every time it rains, 
I have to come and unscrew this cap and let all the water out. You can also get a first flush kit, which will do this part automatically. The problem with that is we have cold weather here in our region, so uh, if you don't take that off by a certain time of the year, you might end up ruining it. This is an easier system, just I take the cap off when it starts to get to freezing temperatures and then I stop collecting uh, rainwater in the cistern. Um, you can also put a, a screen cap on it. I don't have that here. That's another way if you have a lot of trees in your area and you're getting a lot of leaves on the roof, that's sort of something that will divert all, the, all that larger um, waste and it won't end up even getting caught in your, your flush tube here. Um, the cistern itself is right down here. It's an 1100 gallon plastic cistern and I've buried it underground and there's many different, when I installed this thing initially, there were many different opinions about how deep it should be. I think that it should be as close to the surface as it can be because for one thing you don't have to dig as deep a hole, but also then you don't have to pump up as high. There are some potential hazards to cistern water since it isn't chlorinated, but careful monitoring, proper roof flushing, good filtering, and if necessary a dose of water purifier can all but eliminate the risks. All that being said, I can tell you that the rainwater from my cistern is the best tasting water I've ever had, and it never needs softening and it won't leave any residue or minerals on your pipes. But keep in mind that collecting water off your roof is not legal in all parts of the country. It's hard to believe that in this free country, even water falling from the sky isn't free for the taking. But out west, where they're irrigating the desert to grow the vegetables you see in your grocery store, agribusiness gets first dibs on water falling from the sky. Well, thanks for watching. I hope this video has inspired you to look into getting a cistern and freeing yourself from dependence on the water grid. If you have any questions, visit my website, hardcoresustainable.com, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and share and like this video. Now that's the feeling we've all had Now a new shoe would make you glad But the best time to recall When you wore no shoes at all Back the days when we were just a kid